Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's session, How to Launch an RTO. Thank you very much for attending today's session. I look forward to answering your questions. The format of the webinar is I will be going through a series of questions that we typically get asked about setting up an RTO. At any given time, you'll be able to ask a question through the chat box in the uh, right hand side of your screen. It should be on the right hand side of your screen. Um, just pop any questions that you may have at any given time and I will answer those questions as I go throughout the webinar. As I stated earlier, I will be going through a series of questions that we typically get asked about how to launch an RTO or CRICOS organisation. These questions have come about over years of us working with training organisations and generally new inquiries about uh, what it's like and what's required for setting up as an RTO or CRICOS provider. Not only will I be answering those questions about the compliance side, I'll also be answering questions about your business um, and how you would like uh, the structure of the business to be, what is the ideal model for the structure of the business uh, when you, as you're setting up an RTO. So we'll continue on to the webinar now. I'm just going to switch my camera off. Okay, so how to launch an RTO. So basically what we go through with this webinar is um, a lot of people want to know how to set up an RTO, but it's also um, recently we've had a whole heap of changes that have happened uh, with the legislation. So if you may or may or may not have heard that ASQA have changed the requirements for initial registration. So I'll be touching on the, some of those changes that uh, have been implemented as of the 1st of July. I'll also be going through, if you've, you may have read that on our website, we have a blog on that I wrote on the changes that were coming up um, and what ASQA stance is on those changes. Uh, and I'll be discussing those as well. Okay, so a bit about me. So my name is Angela Connell. I am the owner and director of Vivacity RTO Coaching Consulting. I commenced in the training industry back in 2003. I've worked in a range of RTOs, private RTOs and public service RTOs. I've owned and operated two of my own RTOs as well as for three other businesses in a range of different areas um, in the past. So my training background, I owned, a, my, the big RTO I owned, I ran it for three and a half years. I purchased it from another RTO. And when I commenced that RTO, we only had eight qualifications on scope. We had five trainers and assessors and three administration staff around about that. Uh, when I sold it three and a half years later, we had 35 qualifications on the scope, 40 trainers and assessors, eight administration staff across two sites with 15 training rooms um, in Newcastle and the Central Coast uh, in New South Wales. Since then, I sold the RTO back in 2009. I've been running Vivacity RTO Coaching Consulting. So we're coming up to 10 years next year, so we're nine years this year. So with Vivacity RTO Coaching Consulting, I've been assisting training organisations with gaining their registration as an RTO or CRICOS provider. I've also been assisting them with managing their own ongoing compliance. In our team, we actually have eight people on our team. We have five administration staff working within the office, two of which there's myself and Amanda. Amanda is also an auditor, so Amanda and I are auditors. Uh, we also have two other external consultants that we work with who are also auditors, uh, sorry, three others that we work with that are also auditors, uh, and they assist us with consulting with clients uh, around Australia. We have over 200 clients around Australia in both RTO and the CRICOS sector, of which we are currently working on 89 clients, um, of which a lot of those are under membership. We have a membership program where we look after clients on an ongoing basis, uh, where they don't have to worry about their policies and procedures and documentation. We deliver do that for them. And we also deliver monthly webinars on how to maintain your compliance on an ongoing basis. 
So I've worked in many, many different RTOs. Um, I've audited over 200 RTOs or, be, or participated in 200 ASCO audits around Australia. Uh, and during that time, that has been for initial registration, re-registration, complaint audits, addition to scope audits. So a range of different audits and backgrounds. So we have extensive experience in this area. My background's also as a uh, business owner and operator, but I've also a business coach and been delivering business training for um, oh, over 20 years now. Okay, so as I stated earlier, ASQA uh, has changed their requirements for initial registration applications. So they're increasing scrutiny on new applications from 1 July. So we had a very busy month last month because we had a whole heap of clients who wanted to get submitted before the changes came through. But what we've identified with these changes is that it's actually going to be a good thing for the industry. Um, most, of the, most of the changes are around the submission requirements. So you'll now be required to complete a self-assessment for registration for both RTO and CRICOS. So this uh, is if you are already an RTO and now you're applying for CRICOS, that's applicable to you. If you're initial registration for either RTO or CRICOS, this is also applicable to you. So this self-assessment is basically uh, an audit process of auditing your RTO prior to commencement to ensure that it's actually going to meet the requirements of the standards. So we've changed a lot of our process now. Uh, we're in the process of doing that actually right now, uh, changing the process for how we'll be working with our clients. Fortunately, our process was very similar to what the new process is anyway. We prepare all the pre-audit docs uh, prior to submission, that includes training and assessment strategies, trainer assessor files, ensuring that you have sufficient resources in place in your training rooms and assessment tools um, and all of those requirements. And that's what the self-assessment is all about, is assessing your capability to commence delivery of training and the level of quality of that training that you'll be able to offer through that capacity. So that is the main part of the self-assessment. There's not, it's not a major change whereby it's going to cut out quality operators. What it's going to do is cut out those operators whose intention is just to set up RTOs to sell them, for one. Secondly, it's for those um, organisations where they wish to apply for registration, but they're not prepared. They don't understand what they should be doing. They don't understand the compliance requirements. They don't understand what the structure of their organisation should be. They're not willing to undertake further development, professional and development, to ensure that they will um, have uh, meet all the requirements of the standards and actually understand the requirements of the standards. So that's what we're seeing with the self-assessment, uh, which is I think is actually a really good thing because it's going to improve the quality of the training organisations that we have around Australia. They've changed the requirements around the fit and proper person form, so there will be more requirements around um, what you will need to complete, who needs to complete a fit and proper person form, and basically they're trying to identify how many RTOs out there, um, uh, how many people who are applying for RTOs have they also got their name down uh, as a registration with another RTO. Um, as I stated earlier, their intention is to stop the amount of organisations whose intention is just to set up RTOs to sell them. So they're um, uh, more interested in quality operators who have the capacity to deliver that training assessment. There's also some changes around the financial viability requirements. There's much more scrutiny around the financial viability and uh, it's, it's for new applicants to identify, do they have sufficient resources in place in order to operate as an RTO? And that includes human resources as well as physical resources, uh, including training rooms. So you need to ensure that you have a training room that's fit for educational purposes and has been um, confirmed by your local council that those training rooms are fit for uh, educational purposes. You'll see a lot of the information that I will be providing you in the webinar today have come from fact sheets um, from the ASQA website, but it's also come from our experience with audit. Uh, so far this year, we've attended, I would say about 30 audits this year. That includes initial re-registration, additions to scope. So there's a range of different audits that we've attended this year. 
The financial viability requirements, as I stated, a lot more scrutiny around what you need to have in place and the documentation that you need to complete with your financial viability are a lot more extensive in order to identify that you have sufficient resources, including uh, physical and human resources, to meet the capacity requirements of the qualifications that you wish to deliver and how many student numbers you wish to deliver to. We've, uh, due to these financial viability requirements, we've actually teamed up with an accountant, a local accountant in Sydney, who specialises in RTO accounting. And what they do is they're, they're working with us to uh, working on financial viability uh, requirements. And so part of our package for Kickstart package is we include the financial viability requirements and that uh, our accountant will work with you as part of the package to ensure that you're ready for the financial viability requirements and the assessment in there. There's going to be increased scrutiny on multiple owners as I had discussed earlier um, and basically what they want is a genuine intent and or capacity to provide training, quality training is what they're looking for. To find out more about those changes, I uh, posted a blog back in May um, about the new process for initial registration and here is the web link uh, that you can go to to get more information about that uh, webinar, I'm sorry that webinar, about the new requirements. Uh, and it will certainly assist you with understanding what are the requirements uh, for initial registration and what ASPA are seeing are the new changes. Um, so I'm just going to give you right now a link to the ASPA website that has some more information about what ASPA scrutiny will be on these RTOs. Um, and I'm also going to give you a link uh, to uh, the blog that I posted back in May about the scrutiny on new RTOs. Um, at first, it was a bit concerning when these changes came through, but since then, uh, we've been working with the new requirements. Uh, we already uh, have clients who are being audited against the new requirements, um, and we've just found it's very similar to our old process. So uh, we were already prepared for this anyway um, in the past. So anyway, so there's some... Um, uh, interesting reading for you. So you're thinking about expanding your business into the RTO or domestic market or the Crycos international market. So there's a number of considerations that you need to think about in order to identify, are you ready to do this? It could be that you are currently delivering non-accredited training and now you are looking at delivering accredited training. So these are qualifications or it might have been courses that you were delivering that were not nationally recognised around Australia and now you want to offer uh, nationally recognised. It could be that you're currently partnering with another RTO and you're delivering training and assessment under their scope of registration and now you've decided that you've got yourself to a stage where you now want to deliver training and assessment under your own scope of registration. Um, that's another reason why you might become an RTO. It could be that you're an RTO and you've identified an opportunity to move into the international market or you have uh, connections overseas where you could possibly bring international students into Australia or, or you've identified a qualification area or training uh, where you could provide services to meet a certain country of origins requirements so it might be their skill shortages um, areas. So there's some pretty good reasons why you would want to expand into a, a nationally recognised training organisation or get into CRICOS and they're typically what we find our clients come from. Uh, typically about 80% of our clients already own and operate another business or they've worked in the training industry prior and now they want to set up their own RTO um, or uh, it could be a business in anything. It may not be an RTO. It might be in some sort of other area uh, that they've decided to set up a training organisation. So what does it mean to become a registered training organisation? It means you can deliver nationally recognised training with nationally accredited courses and you'll be able to issue certificates that are recognised across most countries around the world. So it's not just Australia. The Australian quality framework where we are 
uh, regulated against the standards for registered training organisations is recognised in a lot of other countries around, particularly Asian countries, where they recognise our qualifications are of a high quality. As soon as you become an RTO or registered as an RTO, you can commence delivering of training overseas, anywhere overseas. Um, you can also deliver domestic to domestic students in Australia, but you can't bring international students into Australia on a student visa unless you also have CRICOS registration, which we'll be going through next. As an RTO, you will have the ability to apply for government funding. Non-accredited training organisations cannot access government funding or traineeship. Um, and it might also mean that you are meeting an industry requirement. And generally, that's what we find is we have a lot of clients who have identified an industry need and they're filling that need with training and assessment uh, qualifications uh, that meet those industry requirements. So a CRICOS organisation is the Commonwealth Register of Institutions and Courses for Overseas Students, also known as a CRICOS provider. It means that you are able to deliver training to international students into Australia. So they've obtained a student visa and they come over to Australia and you can deliver training. The biggest difference with CRICOS provider uh, against an RTO is as a CRICOS provider, you are responsible for the safety and care of those students whilst they're in Australia. So it's a whole different ball game when it comes to the legal requirements of the safety and care of those students that you're bringing into Australia. So ASQA have stringent requirements around how you should look after those students, monitor those students, ensure that they're meeting their visa requirements, uh, and that they're also being cared for while they're in Australia. So you have counselling and support services to assist those students whilst they're in Australia. So if you couple a CRICOS registration with an RTO registration, it means you can also deliver nationally recognised training qualifications or certificates to international students. You may also just want to become a CRICOS provider where you're delivering English language courses to students in Australia, um, but it's a big opportunity for you to expand into the international market where you can bring students into Australia and deliver training and assessment uh, for those students. Generally with international students, they will pay more for their training and they'll, they want to be in Australia for as long as possible. So they want to... Um, they want a framework where you can provide them with a pathway of training so that they can stay in Australia for, generally they want to be here for a maximum or a minimum of two years. So they want to have a training pathway that you can provide to, in order for them to be able to stay in Australia for as long as possible. So you might be thinking, should I become an RTO or expand into CRICOS? Well, this will all depend on your current circumstances. Where are you right now? Do you have a business? Are you delivering training under the scope of another RTO's registration? Uh, do you have the market? That's something that you really need to identify. Now, you don't have to have been operating already under another RTO. Um, you can have just make the decision that you wish to deliver nationally recognised qualifications. But you need to just work out how is that going to fit in with your existing business if you do have an existing business? Or how are you going to take advantage of the market um, and identify where you're going to be able to recruit new students into your organisation. So do you need to have it? We often get asked this question, do you need to have a training background in order to set up an RTO? No, you don't. You don't need to have any training experience whatsoever. But you do need to ensure that you have trainers and assessors who hold the relevant qualifications in Certificate 4 in Training and Assessment, as well, as well as the qualification that they wish to deliver or above. So you need to have sufficient resources in place with your trainers and assessors that have sufficient skills and knowledge to be able to deliver that training and assessment. Are you currently delivering non-accredited training and now you're looking at becoming an RTO? It's an excellent reason to set up as an RTO. Uh, we had a client that was working with us a couple of years ago who uh, came to us, when they came to us, they were delivering non-accredited training in project management. They actually came up with a dilemma where one of their biggest uh, clients, which was a mining organisation, actually came to them and said, well, now in order to meet our ISO requirements and to reduce our insurance premiums and to meet our other contract requirements with our clients, we need to ensure that all of our staff have a nationally recognised qualification. We want to continue using you, but we cannot use you unless you become an RTO. They had three months to do this in. 
we they came to us and we had them registered um, and submitted within a month and we had their registration within two months. So we got them all registered. Uh, they had to be registered prior to the end of the financial year. They were going to lose a $2 million contract if they didn't get their RTO status. So that's a good reason to become an RTO. Another reason might, might be that you're delivering non-accredited training and your industry has identified that it requires a nationally recognised qualification. It might be that you're delivering unique training and now you want to set up so that you can deliver training and assessment um, that is nationally recognised. So you might want to have your uh, qualification that you've developed uh, uh, to be accredited by ASQA. So that is another reason why you might want to become an RTO so that you can deliver your own accredited course. So does your industry require a nationally recognised qualification? That's something you need to identify. Sometimes it's not worth your while or the expense of setting up as a registered training organisation if your market actually doesn't require a nationally recognised qualification. So you need to take this into consideration. If you're looking at a CRICOS registration, do you have access to the international market? Do you know that you'll be able to bring students into Australia and commence them training under your organisation? So another question we get asked a lot is buying versus setting up your own RTO or CRICOS business. Should I buy or should I set up my own? Now, there are features and benefits and weaknesses with regards to buying and setting up your own RTO. So buying, um, and the, there's been some major changes with buying an RTO, which I'll go through following um, these, these uh, comparisons here. So buying an RTO can be much quicker than setting up your own RTO, but just because you buy an RTO doesn't mean that you won't get audited because you will get audited. So anybody, as soon as you notify ASCO, which you need to notify within 90 business da calendar days of a transfer of ownership, so a new CEO that's been um, uh, positioned within the RTO or CRICOS organisation, you need to notify the government. Um, when a new CEO comes on board, ASCO will identify you as high risk and you will be put forward for an audit. So you do not escape going to an audit. A lot of people think by buying an RTO, um, they'll escape with uh, going to an audit. It has a higher risk of non-compliances because when you buy an RTO or CRICOS organisation, it's a sale of shares requirement. So what you do is you buy the shares of that organisation and what you buy also is all of their non-compliances, any issues that they had within that organisation. Um, if they uh, were rorting the government with government funding, um, any uh, thing where they claimed money, where they shouldn't have claimed money, uh, you will also be responsible for any refunds back to the government um, if they did claim money that they shouldn't have. Um, but it is a really good option if there's goodwill. So they've already got clients in place. Um, they already have uh, systems already set up. So you can just jump in and go straight from uh, where they were already delivering training and assessment. It may be non-compliant, so as I stated before, you buy all of those non-compliances as well. And you may need to add new qualifications to the scope because it doesn't actually have the qualifications that you wish that you require. So when you set up an RTO, there's much more lower risks as there are no non-compliances. Um, there will be a lot more work uh, up front to set up the RTO or CRICOS organisation because you need to go through that registration process. Um, you'll need to know what you are doing or hire an expert who does know what they're doing. Um, but you do get to choose the qualifications and or assessment tools um, that you're going to use for those qualifications. Now, the big change that's come through um, as of the 1st of July, ASQA have now identified that um, anybody who is, I stated earlier, um, they're trying to crack down on the number of organisations that are setting up RTOs with the intention of selling. So if you see any of those, what we call clean skin RTOs, so they're an RTO that's just been set up, never operated, um, they have a couple of qualifications on their scope and you just buy the RTO. Uh, ASQA are, um, have increased scrutiny with those RTOs, so those RTOs that are up for sale, uh, in particular those clean skin RTOs that are never operated. 
ASPA are now targeting any RTOs that haven't delivered any training and assessment within the first two years, their intention is to cancel the registration of those RTOs because they don't have the intent or the capacity to deliver quality education and training because they haven't been doing it, so they can't demonstrate that. So you've got to be careful if you're looking at buying an RTO or a CRICOS organisation and it's been operating for two or more years um, and it has no students, it will be targeted by ASQA. So that's a risk that you take when you buy an RTO compared to setting up your own RTO. Now, in saying that, I've bought and sold RTOs myself. Um, there is increased scrutiny, as I said, uh, ASQA are trying to crack down on the number of organisations setting up the RTOs with the intention of selling the RTOs. Um, but there are opportunities, like I had a lot of goodwill in my organisation when I sold my RTO. So there is uh, good opportunities out there where you could take on, particularly if they've already got an established market, and you can take on that established market. So it's a great way, that's the goodwill, where you can get hit the road, ground running and start with that organisation. But the big thing here is ensuring that you undertake your due diligence of these organisations that you purchase or intend to purchase to ensure that they are actually compliant uh, and they're actually financially viable uh, in order to meet the requirements of ASPA. Otherwise, you're going to be buying an RTO that will be cancelled. The registration will be cancelled by ASPA. So you don't want to run that risk. So you really need to be undertaking your due diligence to ensure that that training organisation is going to meet your requirements. Okay, well, when setting up an RTO, you should begin with the end in mind. You may already have a company that you have set up or you may want to set up a new entity. RTOs can be registered under a range of structures, but the structure that we highly recommend is a proprietary limited structure. And the reason why is because this is the easiest um, structure to sell uh, later on down the track. Now, when setting up an RTO, the intention is an investment. You're investing into the training industry and this organisation is an investment that you can sell down the track. So you should manage it as an investment uh, and something that you'll be looking after on an ongoing basis um, so that you're, you can sell this organisation at a later date. So proprietary limited is the best structure that we um, have identified. Now, you may already have a company in place, so a proprietary limit, or you may have a number of companies in place um, so that you are working with already. So with those, you may have all of these other companies already set up. What I recommend is that you set up an RTO as a separate entity. You don't join it as part of another company. Um, and the reason why is it might be that you own a consulting company right now. Um, if you go to, if you set up your RTO registration under the consulting company, the other priority limited, when you go to sell, you've got to sell the whole entity. You can't break up the entity because it's a sale of shares when you're looking at selling an RTO. So you want to set it up as a separate entity so that um, it's a more viable business for you to sell. So what we recommend is you set up a trust and have all of the entities run under the trust. That is the best structure for setting up an RTO. Okay, so who should you have in your RTO? Well, we've helped many, particularly RTOs, where we what we call me, myself, and I RTOs. So these me, myself, and I RTOs is they they are the trainer, assessor, they're the CEO, they're the marketing manager, they're the finance manager, they're doing everything. So the org structure is basically you, 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 and you. Um, yes, you can do that. There's no problems with doing that. Now that's for an RTO. For a CRICOS organisation, you will need to ensure that you have a principal executive officer. You will also need to ensure that you have student support officers. Um, if you're looking at putting ELICOS on, you will also need to have an academic manager in place. So there's a minimum of three to four staff members and depending on what capacity you're applying for. The more students that you apply for, the more staff you need to have. So you need to ensure that you have the capacity to look after those students or the potential students that you are applying for uh, your application for. 
You don't need to have a team uh, to set up an RTO, but we do highly recommend that you get some experts on your side who have some experience in the training industry and in particular compliance to help you throughout the whole process, which is what we do as at Vivacity RTO Coaching and Consulting. We assist organisations and we manage that ongoing compliance requirements. I've been in the training industry for over 20 years and all of my team members must have a minimum of five years industry experience in the training industry in order to uh, work within Vivacity because we need to have extensive experience in order to be able to assist you guys. Um, with directors, I, it, I highly recommend that it's a good idea for all directors to get involved throughout the whole process, but it's not always required, but it is a recommendation. Your trainers and assessors must hold the, a minimum of Certificate 4 in training and assessment and hold the qualifications in which they uh, to be delivering training and assessment. So, for example, if they're going to be delivering Certificate 4 in business, they should hold a minimum of a Certificate 4 in business. They could hold a diploma or they could hold a higher qualification, um, but you need to map their skills and knowledge back to the Certificate 4 level or whatever level qualification that they are going to be delivering. But you need to ensure that you have trainers and assessors, sufficient trainers and assessors in place. So how long does the process take? Well, if you get in contact with ASCO, um, they're actually going to say more than 12 months now, but around about 12 months is what they state. Our process for an RTO is to submit within three to four months uh, with ASCO, and ASCO can take another three months to go to audit. Uh, just recently, we had our record. We submitted a client in eight days. We can do it. We know how to do it, and we have the... Uh, resources in place in order to be able to submit a client within eight days, but you need to make sure that you have the resources in place in order to complete the required documentation, which will guide you through um, in order to get them ready for submission. Now, that one we got through within eight days, submitted within eight days. That was prior to the new changes. So there's now a self-assessment that must be conducted prior to submission. And you also need to do uh, extra work around the financial viability. This client we got submitted within eight days, built a business plan, undertook all his financial viability, uh, wrote projected profit and loss. Um, so we not only got uh, one in eight days, we've got an, um, another two in 20 days, we got them submitted. Um, that's about normally what the process would be, about 20 business days. Um, but our process is, we've got a very systematic approach when we're working with our clients for submission uh, to ASQA. So the time frame will be dependent on your current workload and your commitment to any other businesses or if you're currently employed, your commitment to that. What we require is a minimum of 10 hours per week with working with our clients. But if you were to do this on your own, um, I've seen people who've come to us following um, attempt of doing their own registration and it's taken them two to three years um, to get their application submitted because it's a, quite a bit of a process and particularly now with the new self-assessment requirements. Basically, what we do with the self-assessment is we come out and audit you at your premises to ensure that you're ready for submission before, prior to us submitting your application. So do you need to be an expert in an RTO or CRICOS? Well, you will need some expertise in your RTO or CRICOS to minimise your risk. Now, that could be through hiring of a consultant who can assist you or having team members on your team who have experience uh, within the training industry or CRICOS. Um, and the main reason why is because it is there is a lot of legislation that you need to comply with. Um, and it's, it makes it so much easier if you actually have people that you're working with who have experience in this area and in particular had experience at audit um, who can assist you throughout the whole process, particularly if you don't know anything about the training industry. Um, we've even had people that have been in the training industry for 10 years who we've worked with because their focus has been on building the business, not on the compliance side of the business, whereas we do compliance day in, day out, every day. So that's what we do. So you'll need to have policies, procedures and documentation that support the government requirements. It's even better if those policies and procedures and documentation have been through audit before. Um, so that's either for standards for RTOs or the National Code for 
Cross registration. We recommend that you hire qualified and experienced trainers who have a minimum of three years industry experience. It's actually a requirement of ASQA that your trainers and assessors hold the Cert 4 in training and assessment and they have a minimum of three years industry experience at the level of the qualification that they're delivering. So if they're delivering a diploma level qualification, they should have management experience at that level. If they're delivering Certificate 3 level, then they should have had hands-on experience at a Cert 3 level, which is as a worker um, where they may be working under the supervision of other staff members. We recommend um, with all of your trainers and assessors that they've worked more in a supervisory role um, because it gives them a better understanding of um, how to manage and maintain a class. CEO and directors do not need to have any experience in the training industry. You just need to ensure that your team has that training experience, in particular for CRICOS, as I stated earlier. If you're looking at offering um, ELICOS, uh, you'll need to have an academic manager in place. You'll need to have a student support officer um, and you'll also need to have um, sufficient staff members there to look after the uh, counselling requirements of the students as well. Okay, uh, something we get asked all the time is how much money will I need? So the ASQA fees uh, vary. Uh, so for an RTO, you're looking at $8,000. They've just changed, they've just released today new fees. And I noticed that CRICOS has now gone down to $8,000. So it's RTO is $8,000, CRICOS is $8,000. So that's $16,000 if you want to do both RTO and CRICOS registration at the same time. We recommend that you have sufficient funds for about uh, for an RTO. You're going to need about twenty-five thousand, and Crycos you're going to need forty thousand, and that's for incidentals, all sorts of different incidentals. On top of that, you're going to need training and assessment tools, which range from thousand dollars to fifteen thousand dollars per unit of competency or for a qualification, uh, for you to have those assessment tools in place. You need to ensure you have a database, and if you're looking at delivering some online training, you may need an online training platform, so they can range in prices as well. CRICOS can be a bit more because you're looking at language services and how can you assist those students on an ongoing basis. You need to look at training rooms um, for an RTO depending on the qualification that you have in place. It may be sufficient that you just have a lease in place or a room hire agreement to in order to utilise that building when you are delivering training. For CRICOS you actually have to have 9B approval so that's approval for that building to um, as a training facility and that has the capacity, uh, the, the council will actually state, so when you get your 9B approval, they will actually state what the capacity will be of that building. So that can be you know, $5,000 to $35,000 a month, depending on your size and the capacity of the training rooms that you want to put in place. Um, for an RTO, it can be less because you don't. there's not as many requirements. For CRICOS, you need to have lunch breakout rooms, um, student lounge, um, you, and you might need some more training room so there's a few more requirements with uh, delivery of training and assessment for CRICOS students. For staff you're looking at anywhere between $700 to $4,000 for an RTO. For CRICOS is a bit more because you're looking at academic managers, um, support student support officers which are paying anywhere between $50 to $70,000 for a student support officer. A uh, student support officer doesn't have to hold any qualification or have any experience. They should have a good knowledge of the local area and the services in the local area. They're generally an admin assistant or a training coordinator previously. Um, but they have a good uh, knowledge of what is available in their local area. So for an RTO, we recommend that you get to have a minimum of $45,000 um, in within your first year. So that's for the whole registration process. And for CRICOS, around about $80,000 for the registration process in the first year. Now you've got to remember that this is an investment into a business that could be worth. So an RTO, a clean skin RTO, is worth up to $150,000. That's without delivering any training and assessment. So this $45,000 investment is well worth it when you look at you can triple that um, uh, following the registration process. It's your time that is what people are buying because they don't want to take that time. So what will be required for registration? So 
You'll need to understand who the regulatory body is, which is ASQA, the Australian Skills Quality Authority. They have strict requirements for submitting your application to the government. So you need to ensure, if you're to do this by yourself, you need to ensure that you have a good understanding of ASQA and what are their requirements, what's the legislative requirements that you need to meet, policies and procedures and documentation that you need to have in place, and an understanding of how ASQA operate and what are the regulatory requirements of your audits. Um, and it, it, there's a quite a bit involved. So ASQA are responsible for auditing your organisation prior to gaining registration and it's your ASQA auditor who will determine whether you're suitable um, as a RTO or CRICOS organisation. To find out more you should go to www.asqua.gov.au uh, and you'll find more information there around the registration requirements with this regulatory body. So what are the ASQA requirements? You need to comply with the standards for RTOs, uh, understanding of the Australian Qualifications Framework, you need to meet the fit and proper person requirements, uh, also got financial viability risk assessment and the data provision. So these are all the legislation you need to comply with as an RTO. Uh, CRICOS, there's a whole range of other standards that you need to comply with as well. So what documentation will I need? So you'll need to have a written training and assessment strategy on how you plan to deliver and assess your training and assessment against the nationally recognised training product. You'll need to have training and assessment tools in place prior to your audit that will be sufficient against the requirements of the training product, so you have sufficient tools and resources uh, for that. You'll need to have policies, procedures and documentation against the standards for RTOs and or the ESOS Act and the National Code. Um, you'll need a student handbook, a trainer's handbook um, and the complementary forms and documentation that complement the policies and procedures so that you will be able to implement those policies and procedures. So what needs to be submitted to ASCO? So when you go to submit your application to ASCO, you'll need to complete a financial viability risk assessment, which needs to be signed off by a certified practicing accountant. You need to meet the requirements of the fit and proper person, form requirements. You need to have your training and assessment strategies in place, assessment tools, policies and procedures, documentation, trainers and assessors prior to audit. So this is everything that you're going to need prior to audit. You need to have all your marketing materials prior to audit. So all of this documentation prior to you submitting your application to ASQA, you need to have everything in place to demonstrate that you have the capacity to deliver quality education. If you do not have that, your re application will be rejected prior to even getting to audit. So if you don't have all of that documentation in place, um, you'll be rejected and you'll need to provide that as soon as ASQA ask and that can be within a week of your registration being submitted to ASQA. So you need to ensure that you have all of that documentation in place. For CRICOS, you'll need to ensure that you also have a 9B approval of your building. You'll need to have a building floor plan, timetable, you need to have an international student policies and procedures, an international student prospectus, uh, support services to support those students. Also, you'll need to have education agents and agreements with education agents uh, prior to your submission. So what resources will you need? You need to have a suitably qualified trainer and assessor who has experience in the industry and more important, um, that they have experience in the training industry. Ensure that you have sufficient facilities and equipment in place, and this will depend on your qualification that you wish to deliver, uh, and you should have access to all of the equipment listed under each unit of competency for each qualification or training product that you wish to place on your scope of registration. So where we've seen people fail before, so where they've come to us, they've tried to submit their application by themselves, and then they've come to us following um, their audit, uh, a bit freaked out, is they didn't have sufficient policies and procedures in place, or the supporting documentation to support those policies and procedures. They didn't have sufficient training facilities to meet the training needs, so we assist you with identifying whether your facilities will meet the requirements of your training product, so we assist you with that. We don't find the training facilities for you, but we assist you with identifying what you need to have in place. You'll need to have training and assessment strategies for each training product that you wish to place onto your scope of registration. Um, you'll also need to have sufficient trainers and assessors and have the capacity to deliver that training and assessment. They hold the qualifications and they have suitably, suitable experience. You also need to ensure that you have assessment tools in place to meet those requirements.
So what's the risk of setting up without expertise? Well, you could lose money, i.e. purchasing the wrong resources. Um, you could be missing crucial documentation that would uh, re give ASQA uh, grounds to reject your application. Not being properly prepared for audit. So a lot of our processes, we're teaching you how to comply. So we have a series of webinars that are delivered on a monthly basis where we're teaching you how to comply with the legislation. We find a lot of people have wasted time. They've taken over three years to submit their registration application and then they're rejected. Um, it's a lot of stress financially and emotionally. Um, this is without having expertise. So you need to have expertise on your side to assist you throughout the whole process. A lot of people get overwhelmed with the ASQA requirements. We don't because we've been doing it many, many times. We've been through many ASQA audits. Um, you may go through this whole process and then you end up with restrictions imposed on your RTO. So what if you are deemed non-compliant at audit? So ASQA provides you with an audit report following the audit. It's supposed to get back to you within 20 business days, but it doesn't always get back to you within that time frame. But when they provide you with the ASQA report, they'll have their determination on this and your risk factor. So whether you are high risk or low risk, they'll identify that and they'll identify whether you um, will have an opportunity to submit rectification documentation or undertake a reconsideration process uh, for uh, submitting further evidence to the auditors. If it's a minor risk, you'll have until your re-registration to fix the uh, non-compliances um, and provide evidence at your two-year audit. So registration goes for two years and then once you um, have your post-initial audit, so you'll have an audit and, um, within the two years, if you demonstrate that you have the capacity to deliver the training and assessment, you'll then gain another five years registration and then it will be seven yearly uh, following that. If your uh, audit deems you as a critical risk, your application may be rejected and you may be given the option to apply again. So with government, uh, when applying as an RTO, you will be able to have access to government funding, but you'll need to wait a minimum of 12 months. They, most government funding authorities will need to see that you can demonstrate that you can deliver quality training and assessment and that you've actually delivered training and assessment within that first 12 months. And that's how they identify whether you're a suitable provider for government funding. Um, so you'll, also, you'll have access to state and federal government level uh, funding, um, but you also may have access to government funding overseas as well. So the difference with CRICOS and international students, as I stated earlier, you'll be um, the provider will be required to meet 9B building requirements. The focus is more on how you will support the student throughout the process uh, and throughout their enrolment with you as an organisation. Your CRICOS audit will be more focused on the building capacity and ASPA will determine your student numbers based on your building and your training timetables. There's a different set of legislation that's more focused on the students' well-being whilst in Australia and how will you look after their well-being whilst in Australia. Okay, so that's the end of the first part of the webinar. If you have any questions, please post them into the chat box right now and I can answer those questions. Uh, following, we will be, I will be going on to going through our kickstart package and what do we include as part of the registration process. So you can learn more about the registration process and how we can assist you throughout that registration process through our kickstart package. So we've developed this kickstart package for both RTO and CRICOS where it's a systematic approach of how to gain your registration with ASQA. In this kickstart process, we go from delivering training to you so that you can have a better understanding of your requirements as an RTO or CRICOS provider, but we also provide you with all the policies, procedures, forms and documentation, and we guide you through the process of writing your training and assessment strategy. So what do we do that's different from our competitors? So we don't just consult to the training organisation, we coach you and we teach you how to maintain a compliant RTO CRICOS organisation. 
The basis of Vivacity is to teach you how to run a successful business, from monthly webinars to face-to-face -face training. We deliver face-to-face -face workshops on RTO compliance, CRICOS compliance and assessment validation in Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane. We're also looking at going to Adelaide and Perth. So we have a range of face-to-face -face workshops where we deliver them around Australia. Combined, we have over 30 years experience in the training industry. We have extensive experience in writing policies and procedures and documentation that supports the RTO, both for RTO and CRICOS. Uh, and we have a systematic approach for setting up your RTO CRICOS business and managing your ongoing compliance. I have a question. I would like to know the relationship between RTOs and education agents in regards to recruiting international students. Um, so I don't know in what capacity you mean, but as a CRICOS organisation, you need to ensure that you have agreements in place with education agents who will assist students from overseas to get into Australia. So you'll need to have, we have agreements, templates in our package that you can use. That is an education agent agreement. We also have a whole process for uh, acquiring education agents and also monitoring them on an ongoing basis. Um, but you need to ensure that you have an education agent in place. This is only for CRICOS, um, not required for RTOs unless you are also doing CRICOS. Uh, but in order to bring student, international students into Australia, you will need to have agreements in place with education agents um, for that uh, process for uh, bringing the students into Australia. I hope that answers your question, Nick. So if you have any further questions, just post it. So working with our clients, we provide you with training and expert support. You'll get a weekly phone call from your client liaison officer who looks after you throughout the whole process. There's a monthly webinar where I deliver these webinars. I deliver all of the training uh, for Vivacity um, and there's monthly webinars that I deliver that where I'm teaching you how to implement your policies and procedures into your organisation. And anybody on your team, up to five people, can attend the monthly webinar. So you get five logins uh, for the monthly webinars um, and they have access to our team as well. We prepare you for your ASQA audit with a focus on man managing your risk and minimising that risk uh, for going to registration. And we also have an online system where you can access all of your branded documents that are branded to your organisation with your logo, with your um, contact details and all of the organisation details that are merged into the uh, all of your documentation and you'll be able to log into this online system and download all of these documents from one portal. So about our team, we have over 30 years of experience in the training industry, have attended over 200 ASCO audits around Australia. We are a team of experienced auditors in both RTO and CRICOS compliance. So there's not only me, there is uh, Amanda who's also on our team and then we also have a range of consultants that work with us uh, for managing your audit requirements as well. I've been writing policies and procedures and documentation against a variety of legislative requirements for over 20 years. I started in uh, with writing policies and procedures against work health and safety requirements. I've also written policies and procedures against industrial relations requirements and then I ended up in the training industry writing policies and procedures against the requirements of the standards for RTOs and also uh, the National Code for CRICOS. We have, experience, we have experience as trainers and assessors as well. So we're not only auditors, we also have trainer assessor experience. Both, um, all of our team also have experience of working within an RTO or CRICOS organisation as well. So our team are trained by experienced auditors as well. Our package requires you to have no experience. We, we can get you commenced straight away. What you'll get, you're going to ask for a compliant business You'll get a user guide or a policy and procedure manual where it's been written against all of the standards for RTOs and or the national code um, so that you can run your organisation. We are an industry recognised leader who will be working with you by your side. Uh, we'll get you started and making dollars quicker. It won't take you three years. We'll get you registered much quicker. We can get you started straight away and you'll have a team of experts on your side. You'll have an ability to access government funding as well. So set up your RTO CRICOS dream team. So with our experience on your side, 
You will be connected with industry and suppliers from the industry and we'll be able to identify what are the best resources for you to purchase for your organisation and by that we'll also save you money because we'll be targeting what your needs will be. You'll have systems and practices in place that have been through many ASQA audits before and you'll be fully supported with training um, and also with having a team of experts on your side. You won't just have one consultant working with you, you have a team of experts working with you. We have hands-on experience with ASQA audits as well as running training organisations. We are not building you a business for now, we are building you an investment for the future. You have really big goals that you want to achieve and it could take you up to three years to get there. You may be closer than you think. Now that you have the vastity on your side, we'll be able to help you throughout the whole process. So what is the Kickstart Crycos package? In the package you get a dedicated client liaison officer who will look after you throughout the whole process. They will assist you with preparing all the required documentation uh, that ASQA requires. They will answer your compliance questions, assist you with preparing your financial viability documents. We deal with ASQA on your behalf. We complete all your application with ASQA online and we provide you with support throughout the whole process. The Kickstart package includes all of your training and assessment strategy, policies, procedures, forms and documentation. You'll get the face-to-face -face webinars as well as the workshop, so face-to-face -face workshops as well as the monthly webinars. We also include the financial viability. We do uh, the ASQA submission documentation for you. We come to your site to conduct a mock audit and we also come to your site to conduct an ASQA audit. So what we provide you, we provide you with a business plan template that already includes all the requirements for the training industry and you just need to contextualise it to meet the needs of your industry and what you want to deliver and assess. We also provide you with a template for your financial viability with your projected profit and loss. Um, we'll also complete the ASQA forms for you. All your documentation will be branded to your organisation. You'll also get all your training and assessment strategies where we'll assist you with the development. So we'll write it uh, with your assistance. We'll need your assistance for industry consultation because you're the experts in your industry and we're the experts in our industry. So we need you to conduct your industry consultation to ensure that you have sufficient uh, feedback from industry in order for us to develop your training and assessment strategies. We'll also develop all your marketing material. You'll get training which includes monthly webinars where I'll be delivering training against the standards for each month, so the standards for RTOs and also the national code for CRICOS. Um, you also get uh, workshops, face-to-face -face workshops which we deliver around Australia. Following your registration, we'll provide you with one month complimentary coaching to assist you with the transition process that now that you're an RTO. Here are some of our clients that we've worked with in the past. There's only a few of them because we can't fit everybody on the page. But if you go to our website, you'll see testimonials on our website as well for, with, for that, uh, from people that we have worked with in the past. Here's an example of an organisation that we've been working with. So this is the Aviation Safety Institute. They invested in our services to change their non-accredited training into an RTO. We provided them with strategies to implement a continuous improvement approach for their training. Um, he's a business now, has nationally recognised qualifications and he's now meeting industry needs. This is that project management RTO that I was telling you about. So we gained their registration within three months. Um, and their registration was dependent on a $2 million contract. So we get asked this all the time, what if you're too busy? It sounds too hard. I'm feeling overwhelmed. I don't have the money. I think I can do this on my own. I don't think I'm ready right now. Uh, I think I need to know a bit more. I don't really know what I'm doing. You feel like you need to put this off or you need more information. We can help you with all of these. We have years of experience. We have a very systematic approach for gaining your registration status. This is what we do. We make the whole process so much easier. This is a return on investment. A clean skin RTO is worth $150,000 but as I stated earlier there is a risk with selling the RTO straight away um, but it is an investment for the future. When I sold my RTO back in 2009 I sold it for over $500,000. 
Um, and now it's worth a couple of million dollars, uh, this RTO. You'll have the ability to access government funding, access to international market, and an opportunity to expand your business. So would you rather have a team of experts on your side with over 20 years of experience and over 200 successful ASCO audits sitting next to you at audit? If you did this on your own, you could be up for a salary for an RTO manager, which is around about $120,000 to $200,000 a year. It could take you up to three years to gain registration. You run a risk of being going through this whole process and then being non-compliant in audit and then have to spend more time and money to submit a, resubmit, a reconsideration to ASQA. You could lose valuable time and money cause more stress due to not knowing what you're doing and hiring the wrong person to help you. So what we do that's different, we are by your side at your ASQA audit. We include all of the professional development through monthly webinars and two to three days face-to-face -face training in Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane, depending on what registration you're doing. Our documents have been audited at over 200 ASQA audits around Australia by ASQA auditors. We include completion of your financial viability kit risk assessment, so that's included with our whole Kickstart package. Our team has experience in both RTO and the Crycos industry, and we've been working as auditors and within the industry uh, for over 20 years. We have connections with resource providers and assessment tool developers, so we can assist you through that process. Please let me know if you have any questions. We haven't had have been very quiet today. We haven't had very many questions at all. So if you have any further questions, please get in contact with our office. Um, our office hours are 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, you can also email dave at vivacitycoaching.com.au. He's waiting for your email right now. So you can contact him right now um, and he'll be able to send you a quote if you need more information or a quote. He can send you those. You can also go to our website, vivacitycoaching.com.au and you'll find more information there. Um, but give us a call tomorrow on 1300 729 455. And thank you very much for attending today's webinar. I hope that I was able to answer all of your questions. If you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to get in contact with us and we'd be more than happy to answer any of your um, ASCO or audit or registration questions or any questions that you may have about the registration process. Thank you very much for attending today and I look forward to catching up with you again soon. Thank you.